The Black Swan suite of funds from Amplify ETFs provides unique exposure to ETFs that could provide some diversification and risk mitigation. In this video, Amplify ETF CEO Christian Magoon is going to help us explain how they work. That's right. So the black swan strategy is uh, really kind of a hedged equity play. And uh, some people may have read about uh, black swan events and seen some of the strategies used to protect against those types of major market declines. And the concept is essentially you have a barbell approach to asset allocation. On one side, you have a risk off defensive protective asset. In the case of black swan ETFs, that's 90% invested in U.S. Treasuries that's laddered, uh, targeting a 10-year Treasury duration. On the other side of that barbell is the risk asset, and that's exposure to an equity index. Uh, the black swan strategies do it via equity uh, options, in the money call options on different types of indexes. So our original SWAN ETF, ticker SWAN, uh, uses the S&P 500 as its equity exposure. Uh, that launched just over three years ago, and in fact, uh, just got its Morningstar rating after being three years old. A five-star rated fund has about $950 million in, in AUM and been a, a successful, I think, uh, offering in the marketplace. About 10 months ago, we launched ISWAN, I-S-W-N, and that's the international version that targets the MSCI ETHA in, their, uh, in its uh, uh, equity allocation. Uh, that's about $40 million in assets. Uh, and then earlier this week, we entered into QSWAN, Q-S-W-N, uh, which targets the NASDAQ 100 for uh, equity index exposure and excited to talk about that product today. Yep. Before we dive into that product, could we talk a little bit about SWAN? And now that you have achieved five stars, there's a history and track record there. You know, the most recent period of duress in the market is obviously during the lockdowns of 2020. How did this particular ETF hold up during that time period? Yeah, that's the beauty of Black Swan. So because you always had that treasury component and that equity component, protection or hedging is always uh, inside the ETF. There's no trigger or decision that has to be met. So we had that uh, pretty major S&P 500 COVID meltdown and, and really a record amount of time. We were down 30% in the S&P 500. Black Swan was down just 7%. So uh, really showed its mettle in kind of a market decline. Then if you look back at 2019, when the S&P was up 31 percent, uh, Black Swan was up just over 21 percent during that time. So, again, allows you to participate in the upside of the market as well. So we think uh, this kind of barbell approach really offers investors a way to have uh, participation in the equity market, uh, uh, hedging that's always on, but also equity upside. Many of the kind of hedged equity products out in the marketplace have a cap on how much you can return in a given year. That's not the case with Black Swan. And then would it be safe for folks looking at using this as a protective suite if they're comparing it with trend following? There's some pretty clear contraction uh, contrast there between those two different types of risk mitigation strategies. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so we do hear from people who own, own trend following kind of protective strategies. I think the main difference between the black swan suite of strategies and trend following strategies is trend following strategies generally need the trend to change. Uh, maybe it's a 200 day moving average, a 50 day moving average for uh, the protective or hedged mechanism to occur or for assets to be more allocated to equities. So that trigger event uh, is something that's different than Black Swan because Black Swan always has its equity and its hedge component in uh, the portfolio. And, you know, when you see quick corrections, uh, dips in a, in, a, in a major way, uh, sometimes those trends aren't that sensitive to uh, adjust the portfolio in time. And certainly I think we saw that when the COVID drop of uh, last year, where the 200 day moving average just couldn't catch up to a 10 day decline of over 30%. So uh, we think the black swan strategy could be a, a complement uh, to trend following strategies, maybe even a better mousetrap, depending on uh, kind of what your goals are. All right. So, well, let's talk about your new mousetrap. So the newly launched QSwan, what is the investment thesis behind this new ETF? So the main investment thesis is to have exposure to the long-term upside of the NASDAQ 100 with no cap, 
but at the same time have uh, 90% of the portfolio invested in U.S. treasuries as a way to hedge against significant market declines. So again, this barbell strategy just applied to the NASDAQ 100 equity component. I think this is really unique because when you look at the NASDAQ 100, it's had sizable returns. So if you're a little cautious about investing in the NASDAQ 100 uh, and, and missing out on those returns, but you, you know, maybe are a little bit bearish on the overall equity market, this is a way to participate in the upside of the NASDAQ 100 with no annual caps, uh, but also have that protective mechanism. Likewise, um, you know, over the last 20 years, there's been uh, about four different times the NASDAQ's been down 30% in a given year. Um, you know, the amount of treasury allocation to this black swan product, QSwan, allows it to really hedge against major market declines. So we think it allows you hedged exposure to the NASDAQ 100 and probably a less volatile ride over time for investors. Yeah, you're going to underperform the NASDAQ 100 over a full market cycle versus just investing in the NASDAQ 100, but you actually may have a better risk reward profile over time uh, investing in QSwan. And then for the portfolio itself, it seems as though the construction is fairly simple, treasuries and call options. Mm -hmm. uh, how about the rebalancing of the holdings inside the fund? Yeah, so that essentially occurs twice a year in December and June. And really kind of the reset happens amongst the equity allocation. So we mentioned 90% of the portfolios invested in U.S. treasuries, and those are laddered. Uh, and then 10% of the portfolio is invested in, in this case, NASDAQ 100 in the money call options in the form of leaps. Uh, that 10% allocation is divided into two sleeves. 5% of, uh, of that bucket is invested in December uh, in the money call options. And then the other 5% is invested in June. So whenever um, one of those months comes around, that bucket expires. And then at that time, 5% of the fund's assets are invested in that specific month call option. So twice a year, you're, you're basically rebalancing, if you will, your equity uh, participation or weight in the fund uh, based on the index methodology. So if you're looking at adding this to a portfolio as an investor or a financial advisor, where, where do you see the fit? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways to... I guess, incorporate Black Swan in an in a allocation. One is simply to just be a hedged equity play to complement your core uh, equity exposure, uh, but not only just complement it and have equity participation, but have this uh, kind of downside hedge built in that's always on. Second way to look at it would be potentially as a complement to a fixed income allocation, because these Black Swan products have 90% of their portfolio invested in U.S. Treasuries, but in addition, there's the kicker that could add a growth or a total return kind of factor of the S&P or the NASDAQ 100 or the MSCI IFA, depending on which black swan product you want to use. So it's really fixed income with growth potential. The last area probably is as an alternative uh, allocation. You know, U.S. Treasuries do have a fairly low to negative correlation with equities. Um, and certainly in times of market crisis, which is really why the strategy works really well, is you, when during a market crisis event, when risk on happens, kind of the, the area that most investors, especially institutions, flee to are U.S. treasuries. And they tend to actually hold up quite well during a market crisis event. And that um, in the negative correlation uh, really shines generally across all those indexes during a major risk off event in the equity space. So. A variety of ways you can use uh, uh, Black Swan. The other, you know, famous way that some advisors have talked about is I use it as a "what if I'm wrong" scenario. So, what if I'm too bullish about the market? What if I'm too bearish about the market in my positioning as an allocator? Black Swan kind of helps you out because you're really on both sides of the fence. You still have equity upside participation if you're too bearish on the market. So, we think this is a really nice all-weather allocation. Uh, could be used to complement existing sleeves or simply to just hedge against uh, the market calls that, uh, you know, probably most people have a 50-50 chance on being right on. Uh, Christian, thanks for coming on and sharing your thoughts on the Black Swan suite of ETFs from Amplify ETFs. To learn more, please visit AmplifyETFs.com forward slash QSWN. And to learn more about the whole suite, just visit Amplify ETFs. Christian, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jake.